Hi everyone, welcome back to Skywatch Weekly. My name is Nick, I'm one of the theater's managers at the Adler Planetarium. This is the second in our series of videos designed to bring the wonders of the sky to you at home. We had a great response from last week's video, so if you haven't checked that out yet, definitely do. The objects we talked about in it are still visible this week in the western sky after sunset. And in fact, that's about what we're going to start in our view of the Digistar-powered planetarium software. So we're looking west. We can see a couple of familiar things we talked about last week, like Orion and also the very bright planet Venus over there. We'll be taking a look at Venus a little bit later on in the video, actually. A little spoiler here. Stay tuned for a view of it somewhere you might not expect to see it. In fact, in the daytime sky. But for now, we're going to look a little bit higher in the sky. Let's look up from this lower horizon view. We're going to check out a well-known zodiac sign in this area. That would be the zodiac sign of Gemini, the twins. You're looking here for two twin stars, Pollux and Castor, basically right next to each other, just about the same brightness in the sky. Those two mark the heads of, a, you might imagine, kind of stick figures holding hands in this western sky, nice and high up in that winter area of the constellations. And these will be visible in the evening sky really over the next month or so through the end of May, pretty easily seen in the twilight sky after the sun goes down. So definitely do give that a look. Now we're also joined here by kind of the beginning of the springtime constellations really taking over the sky here. We'll look a little bit higher up as well. Uh, just about two thirds of the way up in the sky, a little bit west of south, you have a bright star called Regulus. Regulus sits at the bottom of a really well-known part of the sky here, a, a pattern or an asterism of stars called the sickle. So this sickle shape is the head and the mane, and Regulus marks the heart, of Leo, the lion. So we're going to go look for Leo here. Now I like to imagine Leo kind of chasing these wintertime stars out of the sky. So he, you can imagine him leaping out of this eastern horizon, now very much at the top of the sky, and driving those wintertime stars like Gemini, like Orion, like Canis Major, down beneath the horizon. Now, as I said, Gemini is going to be visible for a while here, but uh, definitely well on its way out. And we can feel that change in the weather a little bit here in Chicago at this point. Well, that certainly isn't everything to look for out there. Just a couple of highlights. Peak your interest, whet your appetite, hopefully go out and find other things as well. And we'll be covering the rest of the sky throughout this series of videos as well. But I want to move on now to our first weekly challenge. I want to challenge you to get out there and see the planet Venus after sunset, no problem. But what about in the daytime sky? Well, to find Venus in the daytime sky, it certainly gets easier if you have a stargazing app. Uh, of course, you can find Venus without that, but at least for your first couple times, knowing what to look for and exactly where to look, that's what's important. If the moon is close to Venus, this gets a lot easier. That'll be the case coming up on Sunday, April 26th. You'll be able to zoom in on the moon, perhaps with binoculars, or just look with your eye. And then based on where the app tells you to look, you'll be able to drift your field of view and find Venus. It is visible just with your eyes. You really need a clear sky, though, nice and blue. If you can then lower the binoculars, but keep your uh, field of view right where you were looking through them, you'll be able to see it. No problem. Now, if you happen to have a telescope, well, the view gets a little bit cooler. You'll see not just a point of light there, but maybe a phase of Venus. This is a picture I captured through my telescope this past weekend. You can see it's just less than half lit, moving on towards a very thin crescent uh, over the next few weeks. So definitely something uh, very cool to look for. Well, today marks the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and in celebration, we're serving the planet by helping scientists all around the world analyze their data with a unique tool called Zooniverse. With Zooniverse, anyone can take part in real, cutting-edge research. You can transcribe text or answer simple questions. The projects we're participating in today include Bash the Bug, where you can help the medical community understand and predict which bacteria will be resistant to specific antibiotics. 
There's also one called Floating Forests that helps scientists understand how forests of kelp grow and change over time. So there'll be links for both of those in the description. That's what we've got for you today. We'd love to hear from you, uh, what you like, what you went out and saw for yourself. Also, other objects that you're wanting to find out about, perhaps uh, satellites, uh, maybe like the International Space Station or some of the Starlink launches that are going on. It's uh, definitely a big sky out there, plenty to talk about. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you follow the Adler Planetarium on social media for a lot of great astronomy content. So thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.